Hello and welcome to Pictorial Planet. My name's John Finch. I'm out today on the moors of Scotland. This is Davermoor. It's about a hundred square miles of wilderness. On it is this house. Nobody has lived in this house for at least a hundred years. There's no electricity to be seen. There's no running water. Can you imagine what it must have been like? I want to photograph the house and in order to do that I want to try to capture some of the feel of that desolation. So I've been looking around here to try to find different angles that would catch that. This is one of them. I have the bog grass that runs up right up to the house. This is all bog land all around me. I'm going to try to get this bog grass in focus and the house as well and try and catch the feeling of desolation of this place. Let's see if I can do that. So one of the advantages I've got today, of course, is I've got this SL66 with me and I can get the focus from very close to the camera right out to the distance. How do I do that? Well, the SL66 has got a unique property and that is you can tilt the lens up and down in comparison to the plane of the film only normally done on large format cameras. So I think it's unique to medium format cameras, this tilt mechanism. So how do I do that? Well, there's lots of ways you can do this. There's charts you can look at. There's uh, phone apps you can buy to help you calculate how much. But you know what? The easiest way to do it is the old fashioned way. And that is to look through the viewfinder. I've tilted the lens down by three degrees and I've tilted the whole camera slightly down as well. Now what I do is I'm going to look through the viewfinder. I'm going to get the sharpness right at this distance around here in front of the camera and see if I'm getting my building sharp. If I'm not, I can tilt the lens up and down or move the camera until I get both the foreground and the distance really sharp. Now bear in mind, this is much sharper than using depth of field. We're actually getting the plane of focus on the film to run parallel up towards the house rather than being um, vertical as it normally is when you take a photograph. I'm going to do that now and let's see what I can get. Yes, she's nice and sharp. Right front, right through to rear. Excellent. What a lovely camera. So this is the second shot I'm going to take. I've got this wall running up to the house. I'm using the same technique to get the wall really sharp in focus and the house. I've tilted the lens down. I've tilted the camera down and I focused until I've got both sharp. Now, the sun is starting to pop out, which is really nice because it's still chilly up here in Scotland. Uh, but that sun is warm at this time of the year. So that's really giving me a nice warm up. So I'm really enjoying this. This is great fun. So let's see how this shot pans out. I've got the film out of the camera into the tank. Let's get to the sink and start developing it. So I'm going to develop this film in D23 replenished. Uh, I'm going to use a twizzle stick today because I want to show you how to use one of these. Some of you have been asking questions about the twizzle stick. And I'm going to use the D23 replenished here. I've got some stop bath and I've got some fixer. And they're all set at 20 degrees centigrade. I've also put some water into the tank and I've raised that up to 20 degrees centigrade as well. So my film is in there. It's HP5. I shot it at 320 EI and I'm going to develop that for 10 minutes. So here we go. Okay, I'm going to pour my developer in and start the clock and start twizzling. Now, for the first 30 seconds, I want to gently twizzle this film and you can see I gently turn it to the right and then back a little bit and then to the right and back a little bit 
and I'm twizzling quite slowly. Now the open end of the film on the spool is pushing developer through there. That's my 30 seconds and I'm going to give it a tap. Make sure there's absolutely no bubbles on that film. So the open end of the film is turning into the developer, which forces developer around the film. Now, some people have said to me, but what about the inside of the film, John? That's got an open end too, but that's in the middle. And that has a lot less force of water going through it than the outside, which is turning much faster. So as I turn it gently to the right and back a touch, gently to the right and back a touch. There we are. And that's how I'm going to continue to develop this film for the next 10 minutes. So I've just taken a temperature of the developer halfway through development and it's at 19.5 degrees. I do it halfway so that we get an average of what the development temperature is. Now at 19.5 degrees I need to add 5% to the development time. If it was 19 degrees, I would add a whole 10% to development time. But it's only half a degree. I'm going to add 5%. So I'm going to develop for 10 and a half minutes. It's coming up to the 10 minute mark now. So in around about 30 seconds, I'm going to empty this developer out. Now, this is a replenished developer, so I'm going to reuse it. So I've got to be very careful now not to contaminate the developer that's in the tank because I'm going to put this back in the bottle with the rest of the developer. So I've got my developer uh, here, uh, the empty jug, and I'm going to pour it in there. We're coming up to the 10 seconds. Pour it in. Coming up to 30 seconds and I'm going to put it in here and pour in my stop bath. Now nothing can go wrong. The film has stopped developing. It is not in any danger of anything happening. I can totally take my time from now on. The only time that needs to be so critical is when you're developing. Don't worry about after you've stopped the film. So there's the film sitting there. I'm going to put this developer that I'm going to reuse over here, well away from anything that might contaminate it. And then I'm going to show you how I replenish it. So in order to replenish the developer, I need to add the replenisher first and then top it up to the black line with the developer. Now, if you've read my book, I describe this in detail, but basically at a certain point, after you've run two or three films through your D23, you put a black line where the top of the developer comes up to in the bottle. And this is where the developer is always going to be topped up to. But after each film, we add 22 milliliters of replenisher first, and then use the, the developer that we've just used on our film to fill up the bottle again up to that black line. There's usually a little bit left and you discard that. So let's see that in action. Here's my replenisher and I'm going to measure my 22 mils out. There we are. And I put that in first. Now the old developer goes back in. Right up to the mark. Perfect. Look at that. And you see there's a little bit of developer left. That's quite normal. You discard that. I'm just going to add a little bit to that mark. There we go. And that gets thrown away. And you keep doing that. You can do that for 30 films before you make a new batch of D23 and a new batch of replenisher. Now with the replenisher, I only ever make 500 milliliters at a time. And with the D23, when I make a new batch, I only make 750 mil. I use 250 mil 
of this old developer first and then top it up with the new, the brand new made developer up to the liter line. That means that you've pre-seasoned it and you don't need to go through any seasoning. I got asked a question today about seasoning D23 and could you season it by adding some bromide when you first make it, when it's brand new? And yes, you can. If you look at ANSCO 17, for instance, that is pre-seasoned with 0.5 grams of bromide. So you could do just the same with your D23. What I tend to do though is use the old D23, a quarter of the old and three quarters of the new. It does the same thing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's program. It's been a little bit different for me and I'm really interested in your feedback. Let me know if you want to see more of this. Um, look at these photographs. They're so beautifully sharp from the front right through to the back. I'm really pleased with my results today. Very happy indeed. The D23 replenished was great. So easy to work with. The HP5 really shone. Very sharp. Lovely film. Always love Ilford films. Thanks so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Thanks so much to my patrons. I really appreciate you guys so much. And here we go.